Steve. America, land of the free, home of the brave, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, pickup trucks, blue jeans, cool ranch Doritos. Products that are associated with the good old U.S. of A. But my fellow Americans, there's one thing missing from this list. One product that deserves re increased recognition of being made in America. I'm talking about bourbon. That's right, bourbon. We drink bourbon cocktails such as a John Collins on Manhattan, Missy O'Malley with her daily mint juleps, and my personal favorite, the Old Fashioned. What, but what is bourbon? What is required for something to be called bourbon? And how did bourbon become our national spirit? In 1964, a congressional resolution declared bourbon as America's native spirit. This legislation was aimed to designate it as a product that can be only be made in the United States, giving it trade protection against foreign competitors like the French do for champagne and cognac, Mexico for tequila, and Canada for extreme politeness. With the passing of this act, agencies within the United States government can take appropriate action to prohibit the importation of, into the U.S. of whiskey designated as bourbon whiskey. Additionally, the creation of such a spirit must abide by very specific regulations. Whiskey is a generic term that can be referred to as an alcoholic liqueur distilled from a fermented mash of grains such as barley, rye, or corn. Various types of whiskey are scotch, Irish, Tennessee, rye, Canadian, and Japanese. But tonight, I'm only going to talk about one true American whiskey. That's right, bourbon. There are five required elements for bourbon for whiskey to be called bourbon. The first is corn. Bourbon must be made up of at least 51% corn. Isn't that amazing? Anyway. The corn in the barrels and the charred contribute of the barrels contribute to the bourbon's distinctive sweet flavor. I'll talk about barrels later. The ingredients are simple. It's called the mash bill, which of course is a percentage mix of grains used to make bourbon. There's corn at 51% or higher. The other grains are barley, wheat, and or rye, nothing else. It cannot contain additives or flavor, only water. Otherwise, it's un-American and un-bourbon. Once the base ingredients are chosen, they're mixed with water to begin, and the yeast to begin the fermenting and distilling process. U.S. federal law states that distillation can reach a maximum of 160 proof. This helps maintain the bourbon's color intensity and its flavorful dish characteristics. Another requirement element is that it must be aged in brand new barrels made of American oak that are charred. The charring causes the wood sugars in the oak barrels to caramelize. This can produce strong notes of caramel, coconut, vanilla, and even coffee, depending on how long the barrel is burned. Bourbon must enter the barrel at no more than 125 proof. These legislative requirements lend itself to the flavor that we all love, or at least I love, corn at 51% or more of the mash bill, no additional ingredients, distilled at no more than 160 proof, barreled no more than 125 proof in brand new charred American oak containers, and of course, made in the U.S. of A. 95% of the world's bourbon is made in Kentucky. If you're wondering if there's something in the water, there is. On its way to becoming bourbon, Kentucky's water flows through limestone reserves, the same material that makes horses strong. Kentucky's fertile soil is perfect for growing corn, something that you cannot make bourbon without. So what's in the name? There are countless theories about historians on how bourbon got its name. With my extensive Wikipedia research on the interweb, I too did not come to a conclusion. However, three theories did stand out. The first is that in the late 1700s, the first barrel of bourbon was distilled in a region that was called Bourbon County. Theory number two involves the French bourbon dynasty. From the popular House of Bourbon helping a young nation find its independence to French immigrants who are believed to have created this style of aging whiskey, the increased number of new Francophiles among us craved anything French. Also, cognac was very expensive. Another theory is that this style of whiskey first gained popularity on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, which was named in honor of the House of Bourbon. Bourbon Street, as it is now, is one of the hardest drinking streets in one of the hardest drinking cities in the country. Fans of the new whiskey asked for that Bourbon Street whiskey, which over time was shortened to Bourbon Whiskey. There are roughly 30 Montana distilleries. Most of them are in the western half of the state. This gives new meaning to eastern Montana being very dry. Three non-Bozeman -bourbon, non bourbons I like are Never Sweat from Head Frame and Butte and two from Willie's, no affiliation, in Ennis, Bighorn, and Million Acre Bourbon. 
Closer to home, I encourage you to go taste and make it a neat. Four grain from Montana Straight Bourbon uh, from Dry Hills in Four Corners. Bobcat Gold and Jim Bridger from Bozeman Spirits located here downtown. And my personal local favorite, Four Drops Bourbon from Wild Rye located in the Cannery District. So you're going to ask, Willie, what's your favorite bourbon? I have two. The first is a 1792 Full Proof. It's a straight bourbon whiskey bottled at 125 proof, which is a whopping 62.5% alcohol by volume. This bourbon has a deep smoky taste with a touch of vanilla and caramel flavor. Your palate may vary. As for my go-to, the one that I suggested my friends, family, and the random guy in the liquor store is the small batch bourbon from Four Roses. It too has caramel notes, but with hints of ripened red berries and spices. Being a small batch bottle, I can be confident of the consistency of the product that's located in the glass. Hey, everybody, look, it's September. Not only is this my birthday month, but it's also National Bourbon Heritage Month. The bill sponsored by a senator from Kentucky passed with unanimous consent. The resolution calls for consumers like me who enjoy bourbon to partake in the American-made spirit and do so responsibly and, of course, in moderation. So, my fellow Americans, there you have it. A reason to wave your red, white, and blue to climb to the top of the M. Shout out that you love your state, your country, and your best girl or guy, and that you love American icons such as baseball, hot dogs, apple pies, cool ranch Doritos, and distinctly made in America products like bourbon. <laughs> USA! 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 All right, Missy's asking me to leave. <laughs>